right, so we have done the last Airbender fight scenes. Let's go on to Legend of Korra and see how they stack up in a tier list. Hello everyone, welcome to the Geek Talk. Today, I would like to discuss what my favorite scenes from Legend of Korra is. Uh, as I was saying in my previous video, if you haven't watched it already, uh, it's gonna be right here above my head. I did the last Airbender fights, book one through three, or books one through three, because you know, plural and all that kind of stuff. English language, it's hard. But as I was saying before on the other one, I was saying that I really like Legend of Korra fighting. I think Legend of Korra fighting is almost like perfection. And I think it's what they were trying to do with the whole martial arts, you know, replication of bending through martial arts rather than magic just being like, you know, a set of hand movements or just standing in, in a mental thing. And this also has the very dynamic camera angles and, and the things I really like about fight scenes that are my favorite. Um, because like I was saying before, I feel like it was a little bit simple in the, in the first book. And now they've really elevated to, I think, where they really wanted it to be initially, but they might not have had the budget or the team to do it. Whatever they were doing now, I don't know who was behind the camera or behind the animations in this one, but all the fights in Legend of Korra are fantastic. And as I was saying before, we are doing an S through A, through B, through C, through D tier. And there are gonna be some that aren't on D tier, but I have to make it very clear that D tier is not bad for Legend of Korra. The worst any fight ever gets in Legend of Korra is just meh. And not even really meh, more like a, it's just okay. And just other fights are better than it. So if you see one that's like that far down, it's not because it sucks. It's just that it sucks in comparison to the other fights that are really good. It's kind of like an NBA basketball player. You might think that bench warmer is really bad, but they're actually freaking great if you play them and pick up basketball. Anyway, let's get into it. First fight, uh, it is the Korra fight versus the firebending trainers. Um, I'm gonna put this, and this is what I was saying before, I think this might be D tier. Now I'm gonna try and do this really rapid fire, but just gut reaction, I'm gonna say it's probably one of the lower fights of the entire series. Not because it's a bad fight, because I think it's actually a very good fight, and I think this would you know, hold up to a majority of the fights in Last Airbender, but in comparison to some of these other fights that we're gonna talk about, I I'm gonna say it's D. So this next one is the triple threat triads uh, versus Korra, where Korra worked them, and man, did I love this fight. I think I'm gonna put this in B tier, uh, in particular because this is our first time seeing Korra interact with other benders in a real way. Like, of course we saw her fighting the fiery benders, but this is her like in the real world and like them trying to overpower her and her sending it back. And then even some of the martial arts she was doing outside of bending, just like straight up martial arts, some of her kicks and her punches were, were really dope. Gotta put that B tier. Uh, the first one here we have is the pro bending fight. I believe this is the fire ferrets versus, I don't know which team, cause I don't know most of the fire bending, uh, the fire pro bending teams, but uh, I do remember this is the particular one where we saw Mako doing his cool under fire uh, move and I thought that was really cool really good introduction to the to the the whole thing so also I'm gonna put this B tier I think this might be I think most of the pro bending stuff is gonna be pretty mid tier or low tier speaking of which oh well except for this one <laughs> this next one which is the uh, Korra you know uh, be the leaf fight scene she had in the pro bending uh, I'm gonna put this one as an A tier uh, mostly on the back of the, the storyline like I was saying before I think most pro bending fights are just pretty much mid tier to low tier in terms of like the Korra fights but this one in particular always gets me teary-eyed every time I see Tenzin come in and watch her and get mad at her for not doing it correctly. Or well, first off, for being on the pro bending team when he said not to, but then coming in and seeing her doing well because she's applying his teaching, I thought was amazing. And I thought that was a really good episode. I think that's actually probably, if not my favorite episode of season one, like top three favorite episodes in season one. But yeah, the the be the leaf pro bending fight a tier for me. Ooh, okay, so this one's hard. So this is Mako and Korra versus the Equalist. And I wanna say it's S tier because some of the shot selections in this are really, really good. But for now, I'm gonna be conservative and I'm gonna say A tier. But this one in particular, I always have a memory of this fight and all the shots in the fight. In particular, I remember it starts off with a high angle on Korra, which is very uncommon for what we saw in Last Airbender. And yes, we did see high angles from Last Airbender, but for some reason they're just not as dynamic because they're either really pulled out or really, really cut in. And with this one, it was kind of like a medium shot where we could see Korra's entire body before she does her firebending. And then they have the huge camera angle where they're wrapping around everybody. 
and just the, the way in which the equalist you know did the chi blocking on her like the way that they framed that shot which is so beautiful to me so shoot i'm like talking it up right now i'm really thinking i'm talking myself to s uh, next one is lightning bolt zolt versus amon so this is the first time we see Am amon properly fight and he actually gives lightning bolt zolt the chance to like you know get out of the situation before amon takes his bending and of course it's a very short fight it's not a very big fight it's just like a few lightning blasts a little bit of fire and then amon dodging it and of course taking his bending but it is still pretty cool and a great introduction to amon so i'm gonna put this in a tier and next up we have uh the fight between cora and i guess the equal is henchman back in the steam room when she was trying to create the distraction i think this one is a pretty okay fight the reason i like this one a lot is because it's actually a fight with absolutely no bending at all even though there is a bending character in it uh, because of course um cora is trying to be in disguise and just you know not show herself out as a bender because you know benders are against the rules in that um that space that they were in but i do really like it i think the choreography is really cool i like that it was non-bending so i think off the top of my head it's going to be c tier but it could go lower could go higher probably going to go lower but it depends we'll see how it goes next up we have the lieutenant versus mako and bolin and this one's also a really cool introduction fight i don't think it's on par with the amon introduction fight against lightning bolt zolt but it's still very good and i think it'll be on that same tier as like the Korra introduction fight with the triple threat triads and kind of mako's introduction fight in pro bending but possibly i would put this one maybe above the mako fight uh in particular because i think lieutenant is so it's kind of like seeing ty lee again right ty lee or may who are like you know these non bidders who can fight you know actual benders but he's even more effective and it's like a, it's a very much it's more of an adult fight versus it being kind of like a kitty fight where you know like these people are getting hit and they're, they're getting hit pretty hard, you know? So I'm, I think that's B tier. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a B tier. Uh, next up, we have uh, Tar Lox, whatever his team was that he got Korra to be on versus the Equalist. Uh, I think this is one is a, is a pretty okay meh fight. I don't really remember it all that much. It's still cool. Again, like I'm saying, any Legend of Korra fight is cool and I will be happy to watch it. But just in terms of some of the other fights that are in here, I don't think it captures me as much. Even though there's some cool things, I think there was a part where they're throwing like gas bombs. And I think there was some bending that was happening with the gas bombs, like uh, either Korra was containing it or something like that. But again, if it's not coming to my memory, then that means something. <laughs> it means that it should be at the, on the lower tier. And then we have basically a whole slew of fire bending fights or pro bending fights, I should say. I know for sure this first one that they win is kind of standard fare, so I also will put it D tier. Uh, not because it's bad, but just because I think it's just standard pro bidding. There's nothing really special about it. This one though, this next one is the one that they're fighting the the veteran team. I forget the name of the veteran team. Uh, the Borkubines, possibly, I think. Uh, I put this on C tier only because I really like the individual earth bending fight uh, that Bolin had with the other veteran. And the reason I like that is because narrative wise, Bolin hasn't really had a time to like step up because he's kind of in Mako's shadow a little bit and he also kind of got dumped by Korra so he was like you know let me take this one and then he takes it and he does a pretty good job of it uh, and I like that that individual one-on-one -on -one fight uh, between him and the other earthbender so that one will go there um, and then same with this next fight I think it would just kind of go on the low tier it was kind of cool in the sense that we see Korra take on all three of the other teammates on or by herself uh, but again just the, the general fight it's, kind of, it's just good it's just good it's just solid but it's not like you know amazing or anything Anything like that however i do really really like the the wolf bat fight versus the fire fer ferrets and i will put this at b tier maybe a tier i'll consider it later but right now i think b tier is a good spot for it uh because you really see all the elements of pro bending play out here like we saw the elements of like the one-on-one -on -one fight with the bowling uh situation and we see that come up here with the with the wolf bats also the way in which um tano fights is really cool even though of course he's a cheater uh, i think it's really clever some of the things he was doing like icing the the foot so that it's you can notice if you're looking for it but if you're you know watching this really fast-paced fight you might not catch it and just the whole build-up i think it's a it's a really good cinematic fight that's why i'm considering that it might go a tier but i think b tier is a safe bet for, for right now and of course right after we have amon and the equal list basically versus the pro benders and the metal bending police and lin and all that and this one i think might have to go s tier could go down to a tier depending but the reason i put it at s tier is because again amon is just a badass he's super cool and seeing that fire plume come up on amon and him just looking like I mean, obviously he has a mask, so you can't see the emotion on his face. So every time you see Amon, it just looks like he's like, whatever. Like, you know, he looks like a Terminator or something like that. Like he has such a presence, Amon, in general. So any fight scene that he's a part of is almost 
certainly gonna be A or S tier, I think. Like, I suspect that. <laughs> and then next up, we have uh, Sato and the Equalist versus Team Avatar. I'm not a huge fight of most of the mech fights in this uh, book, uh, in book one in particular. I remember book four had some really cool, uh, or some somewhat cool uh, mech fights when with the lava bending with Bolin. But in the first season, most of all the mech fights are probably gonna be C or D tier for me, because they did, uh, they're good, but just again, not as entertaining to me as some of the other like one-on-one -on -one, uh, bending fights. So I'm gonna put this one in D tier, I think, because I really can't remember much that happened in this fight that I like particularly really liked. So yeah, I think D tier, because for the fact that I don't really recall too much from this fight. Scene. Now this one, however, is easily S tier. It might be in contention for like the top top of all of the ones I'm doing right now. So this is the fight between Tarlock and Korra. Uh, this is the, the big one from the uh, When Extremes meets episode, I believe. Korra comes to confront him. And then he has that huge like waterfall thing in his office behind him. So he has like all this ammo for his water bending. And then it ends off with blood bending. Like that fight was so cool. There was like some slow motion with her like punching icicles. Ooh, that fight, S tier for sure. And then we have a mom versus Tarlock, which barely a fight it's basically a stomp but man was it chilling as all heck i'm putting it in s tier i remember watching that the first time and just being like what is a mon how is this guy is he like ty lee to the max where he learned how to like negate bending all together now of course you gotta remember this is before we knew that he was actually a bloodbender like this is when we thought that he was just like just next level chi blocker or something and to see him negate bloodbending in that way and then to put Tarlock down especially after how we saw how powerful Tarlock was against Korra super chilling super chilling S tier for me and then we have Yakon versus the courthouse uh again short scenes really a stomp it's just to show how powerful he is not really even a fight scene I know some of you guys are in the comments like why not include that like why aren't you including team avatar when they're like you know fighting the equalists on the road and I'm like oh, that's more of an action scene not a fight scene and this one could possibly be considered as really an action scene or a, or a story beat scene rather than a fight scene. Uh, but I couldn't really leave out Yakon because he freaking takes out an entire courtroom. But considering the fact that it's not really a fight scene, I'm not gonna put it S tier, I'm gonna put it in A tier. Cause yes, this technically isn't a fight scene. However, the next one, which I actually have this in out of order, so we're not gonna actually do this Tenzin one yet, but we'll talk about that later is Aang versus Yakon, which I will put in nest here because I mean, we get to see adult Aang in action and also seeing like how crazy blood, because bloodbending was pretty creepy in Last Airbender, but the way it's animated in Legend of Korra really made me feel twisted inside. And and all of that just worked so well for me in that it, it really creeped me the hell out. Epic, it's epic, S tier for sure. And then we have Tenzin versus the Equalist when they were trying to jump him. Uh, pretty cool fight. I mean, I, it's cool to see Tenzin as like a master airbender where he's able to do that huge tornado cyclone thing or whatever. But again, not really like a fight that I think about super, super often. It's pretty simplistic in its choreography, uh, but it does show Tenzin being a badass. So I'll put it in the C tier. And again, another mech fight, which I told you guys isn't always my favorite. It's cool to see Tenzin fighting. And I even like the part where he got like beat up and then he like started falling to the ground, but then stopped himself with the, with the air plume that he made. Uh, but again, it's a mech fight and I'm not really into mech fights. So gonna put this in the D tier. Really, we should call this the M tier for like the mech tier. Cause that, that's where Antoine doesn't really, that's where he puts him. That's where he puts those fights at the bottom. Uh, then we have uh, Team Avatar versus the Equalist when they came to save Tenzin. Pretty standard fight nothing crazy about it uh, i put this one in the d tier mostly because i'm like it's okay of a fight i mean it's like one of the only fights we see of asami so we could see her in action but again not a fight that i think about all that often pretty standard fare <laughs> and then we have a very funny one we have the airbenders on air temple island versus the equalist so this is all of uh tenzin's children fighting off against the equalist and of course the epic scene with milo going in and farting on their faces, the taste my fury scene. Do I think that this is S tier or A tier? I wanna say A tier. I don't know if it's really like my favorite, favorite fight in the same way that some of these other S tier fights are like my favorite, favorite. Like I'll watch it over and over, but it, it is a really funny fight and it is cool to see like Milo come in <laughs> and do his fart bending. And then we have Lin versus the airship. So again, not really a fight scene, but I also didn't want to leave it out because it really is an impactful scene uh, where Lin is making this sacrifice. And then what happens afterwards where Lin gets her bending taken away, that really hurts. There's not really a lot of people who die in the show, right? So how do you do something on Nickelodeon that's typically for children? How do you make something feel like a death without there being an actual death? 
And the best way to do that is to have someone bending taken away and just, oh, the music in that scene and just pretty epic. Um, I'm going to put that at A. I don't think it's S tier because, again, it's kind of a cheat. It's not really a fight scene. It's just an action scene. But A tier, very comfortable for me. And then we have the United Forces, which includes General Iroh II uh, versus the Equalist. This is the first fight. Uh, I would say I'm not really a huge fan of siege battles and like big battles, but I do really like some of the stuff that happened here. Like for instance, the Korra being underwater and doing her water spout and then like, you know, tossing torpedoes and stuff like that. I think I might put it, I'll put it B tier. Cause it is some awesome, like there's some awesome scale to this fight. I think it deserves B tier, but not really A tier for me. I was almost gonna put it in C tier actually, but no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here at B. And then we have uh, Tenzin, Mako, and Korra versus Amon and the Equalist. A very short fight, not really a big thing. It's just, you know, Tenzin escaping and then, you know, attacking Amon and, and sending him off the stage. Uh, I will put this above D tier. I think it's a C tier fight. <laughs> Tenzin seems to be dominating these, the C tier right here, but I think it's a solid fight, but not something that I, you know, typically revisit a lot, but do, but when I do watch it in the moment, I do think about it fondly. And then of course we have Amon versus Korra and Mako. This one's a crazy chilling scene. It's like a horror film for part of it where Korra is hiding away and doesn't want, you know, Amon to find her. Now this should probably be an S tier fight, but I always had an issue with how Korra got her, her air bending at the end of that. It felt a little bit like, you know, kind of a cop out. I get it though. There's this catharsis that's supposed to happen, but it is it does still feel cheap to me. It still does feel a little bit cheap to me. So A tier for sure. Uh, so this is the one with the fire jets, which is why I would put this on A tier versus B tier, because I do think it's a step above uh, the previous fight that was there. And I really like the fire jets moment where he's actually like fighting against the other uh, airplanes that are going around and it, it's a really epic fight in it. Uh, and then of course we end off this list with another mech fight which you guys already know where this one's gonna go. The D tier. <laughs> and so that is going to mark off my list right now so let's see if i actually agree with it and if i have any arguments for where things should go now i do think that this one is probably my least favorite of the mech fight so i think this one can stay down here at the bottom oh you know what now that i'm seeing some of these other ones i think this Korra fight the first one with the firebenders should actually go c tier not d tier because i think it's a fair bit better like there's that movement where she like kicks the guy's uh, foot under him and he like trips over uh that was really clever and i think some of the firebending also we don't really see a whole lot of firebending in legend of Korra the entire Higher series so it's cool to see like straight up fire bending fight as like the start and also just getting introdu introduced to Korra in general I think it's pretty cool uh, but I think everything I think D tier is pretty solid C tier I think this one would go above this fight here maybe even this other Tenzin fight too this is the one with the Bolin individual fight which I liked a lot so I would keep that there uh, where it is Korra fight where she's just doing martial arts on her own I think that will go behind this one uh, the one where she was doing her training, but above the Tenzin fight. No, I don't think this goes above the Tenzin fight. I think it might go here. I think it might go there. All right, B tier. I really like this fight with the triple threat triads. Uh, I don't think I would put the Lieutenant fight over that one. Uh, Mako's cool and her fire, I think is in a good spot. Ooh, do I like Mako's cool and her fire? No, I like the wolf bat fight, the, the championship fight and pro bending a little bit more. So I'll keep that one there. And I like where the general Iroh fight is. Uh, I think that's a good spot for it. Uh, let's see with these ones, uh, a leaf in the wind. Ooh, that like literally this is top tier, A tier for me. So this is like the perfect spot because it almost gets to S tier for me. So I think that's, that's a good spot for it. Uh, the Yakon in the courtroom fight. Ooh, you know what? The Lin fight needs to go here though, because that one is heartbreaking. Uh, the Milo fight, I think, can go mm, not above, not above the courtroom fight, and I don't think it can go above the Amon and Mako and and Korra fight. So I think that's pretty good. I think A tier is solid. All right, now let's look at S tier. S tier. I'm gonna say that my very favorite fight of that season was uh, probably. Unalak and Korra like that that fight is just killer man like that fight is real dope so I think I'm keep that there uh, the fight with the Equalist is really cinematic but it's not really huge in like a narrative scale so I don't think it really deserves to be like like the top of S tier like that so I think I'm gonna push this back a little bit probably at the at the end I think that's fine so that's it I think that's my list I like it a lot I think that's pretty cool. Uh, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, you can do this list too in the description box below if you want to do it yourself. And hey, share it with us in the comments below. Let us know which ones is, are your favorite fights. Uh, what do you think about my fights here? And also, in case you want to look at more of my videos, you can see them here at the side of my face. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace, love, and remember, be water, my friends.